The Penguins weren't very good, but they got a win. Hi, I'm Dan Kingerski in the National Hockey Now and the Pittsburgh Hockey Now YouTube channel. Penguins beat the Columbus Blue Jackets of PPG 3-2. to No, it was not pretty. The Penguins were an ice-cold cadaver for the first 30 minutes. There was nothing to like about their game. If you watched it on television, you probably heard zero crowd noise. And I mean zero. And that's not because the fans were being stingy. That's because the teams had all of the intensity of a split squad preseason game. Brutal. What changed for the Penguins? And I think this is an important point to note going forward. Michael Bunting, a hard back check, steals the puck before Columbus leaves the zone. Now the Penguins rush the offensive zone. They've got numbers. They've got a little pep. They've got to step a few high danger scoring chances, get the line changed, keep the pressure on. That changed the game for the Penguins. And that was at about, I think, my, you know, just about uh, 1036 or 936 of the second period. At that point, the Penguins began to actually almost play something resembling hockey. They turned the tables, they get some goals, they get a power play goal of Genny Malkin, whose family was in town gets a power play goal by doing what? Blasting a one-timer from the top of the zone. How long has it been since you've seen him do that? Well, he let rip and Daniil Tarasov uh, couldn't corral it. The Penguins uh, did score another power play goal as well. The game did turn in the middle of the second period uh, but there were really just a handful of performances that we, we should note because there were still a lot of turnovers, some terrible puck management, lots of odd man rushes against. Mike Sullivan's backhanded compliment when asked about his defense's performance, Ryan Graves was injured in the first period, so they were with five defensemen for a majority of the game. When asked about how they performed, Mike Sullivan said, Given how many odd man rushes we gave up, I thought they competed hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, the boys might need a pillow to sit on Friday after the film session. The performances to note, obviously of Genny Malkin, family in attendance. There was a little bit of vintage Malkin in that. Gets a, a couple of goals. He was engaged, he was inspired. That was one of his best games. And even after the game, he admitted, yeah, it's, it's nice having my family here. And Mama Malkin, when she comes into town, she cooks, which is A-OK -okay by number 71. Uh, Jack St. Ivany was another performance that I circled. Not because he was necessarily a standout, but because he, again, was solid. I have to go back and really watch uh, one of Columbus's goals, whether he made a mistake or someone didn't take their man. But yes, there was a bobble involving St. Ivany. But otherwise, there was a great sequence in the third period. Coming to the midway point, Penguins have the lead. Uh, Columbus takes the puck deep. But I, St. Ivany gets back on it first. He corrals, corrals it, taps it ahead to the forward. Now, the forward didn't play it well. Uh, you know, Columbus attacks St. Ivany again throws his body into the mass, the puck battle, pulls it out a couple of times, taps it forward, keeps battling. Eventually, he pins two Blue Jackets to the wall. Penguins at that point essentially outnumbered Columbus in the offensive zone. They take the puck and go the other way. That's, that's just those little things that maybe you don't notice on TV. Maybe you notice the shot block or or the shot attempt, you don't realize St. Ivany is back there pinning two Blue Jackets to the wall without holding them. Uh, Michael Bunting, as we noted, I'm gonna steal Herb Brooks's line. Sometimes it's not about the best players, it's about the right players. And while Bunting is no Jake Gensel, obviously, he brings a much needed attitude, a scrappiness, to the Penguins lineup, which they have not had. There's just no two ways about it. 10 games into this Michael Bunting uh, experience, he's still bringing it. That's just who he is. And 
and it is noticeable. Those sorts of things. You don't need the entire team to start playing well at once. You need that spark. He provided it. So if, if nothing else, you give him a tip of the cap because he brought the fight to the Penguins. He brought it to them, drags them into it, and suddenly an absolutely terrible game, awful game to watch, becomes an interesting game because the teams get engaged. He, and there was even a moment, was that late second or third period, early third period, when there's a scrum at the net and Bunting leaps into it. That was... <laughs> And Alex Nedeljkovic, we'll take, uh, when we get to the Q&A part, we'll talk a bit more about uh, Alex Nedeljkovic. I thought he played really well on Thursday. A few pad saves in the first period, a couple of flashes of the leather, including a great glove save on Patrick Laine, who shed Chris Letang. Slammed on the brakes, cut to the center, Letang was shot to the corner. So Line A has a clean look at Nedeljkovic from the hash marks, glove save, and a butte. So that, um, let's just say Columbus gets a 2-0 lead. Penguins pack it in like, ah, eh, not our night. That's how they've done this season. Nedeljkovic makes some saves. So let's get to the Q&A. A lot of it has to do with your scapegoats and young players, and, and I'm going to unpack this. I'm going to be up front here as we get to the Penguins Q&A. Uh, like and subscribe now because you might take it away after I get done explaining some things. Please like and subscribe. Um, El Fusco asks, why Alex Nedeljkovic? If Tristan Jari is the franchise goalie, why is the backup starting these supposedly very important games? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's, let's start with this. And by the way, I've got quite a little playoff scenario for you very um it's not as unlikely as you might think hang on for that because it's part and parcel to the decisions mike sullivan is still making the penguins are trying to win games right now alex and delkovich is significantly uh, outplaying tristan jari jari I, I think whether it be a little bit worn down a little bit overwhelmed by the poor play in front of him other people noticed this. I noticed it. Others noticed it. That after some goals recently, let's call it maybe Dallas, Jari kind of gave some side eye. I don't think he reacted in quite the way that he would want to a goal or two. And he was yanked in Dallas in favor of Nedeljkovic. After the game, we asked Sullivan, you know, the, the three of us there, I, I think it was Andrew, maybe Taylor, because I know I didn't ask a question, but it was one of us, you know, about uh, the goalie pull. And Sullivan said, well, I'm not going to get into it. There were several reasons, but I'm not getting into it. So reading between lines and doing all the things that I know you're going to do between Nadelkovich playing well and, and maybe Jari having a, a sour reaction to some, some goals. Also, the Penguins won with Nedeljkovic on Tuesday. So you have every reason to come back with him. Now, let me insert the playoff scenario here before we get to the rest of the lineup decisions. Think about this. The Penguins, after Thursday night, trail Detroit and uh, Washington by seven points. 10 games to go, right? Impossible, you say. Well, this weekend, Detroit has Florida, and the Capitals have the Boston Bruins. By all rights, Boston and Florida should win. So let's just say, oh, I don't know, the Penguins beat Columbus on Saturday, which they should do. So if all three should happens, in fact, happen, Penguins are five points out, nine games to play. Again, kind of impossible. Dan, shut up, stop it. Penguins then have Jersey and the Rangers. The Rangers have clinched a playoff spot. 
Uh, Jersey is Jersey. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. So let's say the Penguins split. Split those two games. They're five points out. Washington splits their two games after that. Detroit splits their two games. Let's just kind of assume those sorts of, of things. Now, with six games to go, yeah, I think, I think my math is right on the games to go. That's not the important part of the story. Don't get hung up on that if I'm wrong by a game. Now the Penguins go into Washington behind by five points. What if they win that game? Just what if? What if? What if they win that game down in D.C.? Now they're three points back with a handful of games. That's when stuff gets interesting, doesn't it? And yes, I am absolutely rooting for this improbable, unlikely, impossible story to happen. Why? Because it's a hell of a lot more fun to cover something with potential, something that everybody will be talking about, rather than this lifeless march to the end that so many people seem to be embracing. Because, uh, getting to the rest of the questions, they were all about Tristan Jari, Alex Adelkovic, and Jeff Carter. God forbid Jeff Carter play a game. Listen to me. Um, Jeff Carter was a healthy scratch back in... Uh, we were in California in November. Carter's healthy scratched Anaheim. You know, Anaheim has a beautiful practice rink. It's kind of a, a municipal rink, you know, like five sheets there. Nice rink, don't get me wrong. Carter comes out to talk to the media. Now, because it is a kind of like a municipal rink, there's no place for us to get into the locker rooms to go do these interviews. There, there's really no room to go conduct these. So Jeff Carter, being a healthy scratch for the first time in his life, comes out in this dank hallway that looks more like a nuclear bunker, literally with like the um, fluorescent industrial light shining down on us. I think somewhere there's video uh, on the YouTube channel of the conversation. And he answered every question, the few of us who were there peppered him answered them candidly and honestly, didn't duck. I mean, he easily could have just went out with the rest of the team and not talked to the media. How many guys who were healthy scratch actually talked to the media? Jeff Carter did, and he, he, he faced the music. The hockey gods serendipity put him back in the lineup in Los Angeles a game later, where he won a couple of Stanley Cups. And his season has been, I think, dramatically different. There's a good chance he gets double-digit goals this season. If he doesn't already, let me take a look here. How many goals does Jeff Carter have? He has nine. So one more in the next, you know, ten games, and he gets ten. He's been a valuable piece. He wins face-offs. He's one of the best face-off men. He is the net front guy on one of the power play units. He's a penalty killer. And he's a solid fourth-line right wing. So, Thursday night, Carter is healthy. Why was John, Jonathan Gruden scratched and Jeff Carter in? It's very simple. The Penguins wanted to win the game. They have not yet waved the white flag. Ergo, a guy who does all of those things for you is in the lineup. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't a close call. I think Gruden has played with a spark. Hear me when I say this. Gruden has played with a spark. He threw the big hit against uh, Carolina, got in the fight, right? He did some good things. Jeff Carter does more good things, at least in terms of what the Penguins need in this moment. Sam Poulin is not great on faceoffs. Keep that in mind. That's something that fans don't, I don't think, always factor in. I don't always factor it in. But Poulin, not always great at face-offs. Now you've got Jeff Carter on that line, able to take important draws. So the fourth line can function in that defensive role. It, it made all the sense in the world. But uh, I got several questions like, does your night job pay? Why Jeff Carter? Jeff Carter stinks. Uh, Sidney Crosby Goat was like, hey, I heard... Kyle Dubas is going to sign Jeff Carter to a three-year, $15 million deal. 
listen, folks, you don't have to dump all over a player to voice your disagreement. But understand your disagreement is predicated on the wrong goal at this moment. You want to see all the kids play. The Penguins want to win the game. And so in this case, yeah, Jeff Carter probably did give the Penguins a slightly better chance to win the game. He certainly was insurance on the dot for Sam Poulin and is a net front presence and all of those uh, sorts of things. That's not to say that Gruden won't get in because the other person who could have been scratched, Jesse Pugliarvi, had played probably his best two games in years over the last couple of games for the Penguins. He had a strong 10 or 15 minutes against Colorado. He was really good, really good against Carolina for the entirety of the game, actually. So, uh, look, if you're Sullivan, you're like, I'm keeping Pugliarvi in there. I need Jeff Carter in there. And so it comes down to playing Sam Poulin or Jonathan Groot. That's, that's all it was. No reason to uh, get crazy. So the Penguins uh, practice Friday, Columbus on Saturday. By the way, I'll be in Columbus Friday night, if you're bored. I'll be doing the game Saturday. Uh, coming home at some point Sunday because we're on TV Sunday night and we start the whole process over again on Monday. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. I appreciate the thousands of views these videos are starting to get. Craziness! What are you people doing? Am I saying something that's uh, interesting? Uh, I hope so. Anyway. Uh, I think actually those were all of the questions we got. They were all Jeff Carter, Tristan Jari, Alex Nedeljkovic, and I think my little playoff scenario. You might roll your eyes. Take it to the bank. They know. They see it as well. Washington has a negative 30 goal differential. Detroit, untested, feeling the heat, and playing in the Atlantic Division which is Murderer's Row, Boston, Toronto. These are good teams. Ottawa playing pretty well lately. I don't, I don't know Detroit's schedule the rest of the way. I just know that they've got Florida this weekend. And no team wants to play even a 90% Florida Panthers. I'm saying the Penguins have to win. But it's there. It's there for them once again. The hockey gods have dangled the carrot again, and I am here to watch how it plays out. From PPG Paints Arena, I'm Dan Kingerski on the Pittsburgh Hockey Now and the National Hockey Now YouTube channel.